with me. Turn your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 3. 1 Peter, chapter number 3. Uh, we continue our study in a book of 1 Peter, uh, with the theme being uh, glory revealed in suffering. Um, and so what we've talked about before in chapters number 2, as you're turning there, is, is how do we as Christians, as ones who are called to live in the world but not, uh, but not be of the world, how is it that we live our lives uh, through persecution, right? We talked about how we obey the ordinance of man, right? We talked about how we as Christians interact with the government, right? We obey the ordinance of man as long as it doesn't uh, conflict with what God has said, right? And if it conflicts with what God has said, then we follow the Lord, right? We still preach the gospel despite what anybody else says out there. And so we talked about how that institution, the government, right? And, and today... Uh, or let me back up a little bit. And last week we talked about how do we interact with servant-master relationships, right? And a form of that is the workplace, right? And, and then through persecution, we still have to consider our testimony. We still have to consider uh, the attacks that the devil is going to bring to us and still stay faithful to God. So we talked about uh, the three institutions that God uh, created. We talked about government, right? Later on in the chapter, we're going to talk about a little bit about the church, uh, more focus on, on pastors and the church and that kind of uh, relationship. But today, we're going to focus on a very important institution, on the family, more specifically, marriage. And uh, I, I like to say this, uh, I, if you've ever heard the, uh, the saying um, that opinions are a lot like butts, right? Everybody has one. And they all stink, right? So today, what we want to focus on today is not my opinion. It's not what somebody else's opinion is. We all have opinions, right? You can listen to podcasts after podcasts about marriage and about this and that and about, you know, how the, the society has absolutely distorted marriage. But I'm glad that we stand on the authority of the Word of God. I'm glad that the Bible has made it very clear for us as to how we ought to look at marriage, about what the responsibility of the wife is, and what the responsibility of the husband is. So we're going to look at marriage today, and we're going to look at a biblical view of marriage. So let's, uh, let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, as we begin to read your word, Lord, help our minds to be open. Lord, help us to uh, not come in with any preconceived notions, Lord, but to truly, truly learn from your word today. Father, I pray this morning that you put away all distractions, that you uh, uh, fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you uh, speak to our hearts. Uh, Lord, I pray that you uh, help us to convict us of any sin in our lives and help us to confess it before you. Lord, I pray that you, you cleanse me of sin, Lord, that you uh, empty me of self, fill me with your spirit. And Lord, I pray that uh, this morning that we hear from you. Lord, meet with us in such a way that only you can speak to our hearts. Father, Lord, I believe Heritage is a church that loves you and that desires to be uh, more unified. Lord, and Father, help us to understand um, what the biblical roles are this morning. Father, we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said today, today we're going to be talking about uh, marriage, and uh, we're going to focus on uh, wives today. Uh, initially, as I was putting these, the sermon together, uh, I was looking at it, and I wanted to get through the whole section, but I just couldn't get through it in one sitting, right? So today, the, today will be about women. It, it'll be about the wives today, and, and not only wives. You might sit there, well, well, pastor, I'm not married yet. Well, that's okay, right? We can still learn from what a godly woman looks like, right? And whether single or married, right, these are the characteristics that God wants a godly woman to have. And we're going to talk about the characteristics that God wants a godly man to have, right? And whether, you know, whether you're a, maybe you're a single guy today. You know, I relate with you, okay? Maybe you're a single guy today. This is the type of lady that you should look for, right? This is the type of godly woman that you should look for. Or, or, or maybe you're, you're, maybe you are married. You maybe you're a married man this morning. Well, th th this is it's important for us to understand what a godly spouse is, uh, what a godly wife is, and what a godly husband should look like. 
right? And so read with me. Uh, we're going to look at 1 Peter uh, chapter number 3. It starts off talking about wives, and then husbands, and then the brethren in general. So look with me. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, it says, be in subjection to your own husbands, right? And, and so what is this likewise? Like, likewise what? Like what? Well, if we go back uh, to chapter uh, number 2, uh, and you look at uh, verse uh, 18, right? It says, First uh, Peter chapter number 2, verse 18, says, Servants, be subject to your own masters with fear, right? And we see that phrase, be subject. And before that, uh, it was talking about, verse 13, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man, right? And when it talks to uh, wives, right, it's making a comparison here, right? We talked about how God addressed the relationship between uh, uh, servants and masters, right, and between the government and Christians, right? And now that we're talking about family, we see that comparison being made. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. And look at this. This is interesting. That if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, well, if, if there's a husband that is not a Christian, right, that's what it's talking about. Or we even put it this way, if there's a husband who is a Christian but does not act like a Christian, right? And it says that they may, without the word, right, without the word of God, that they be won over, how? By the conversation of the wives. And we know that in the King James, that word conversation is that word for behavior or, or, or that word for uh, uh, the way that you act, right? That may, that, they may, that may be won over by the conversation of the wives. Verse 2, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. And, and that word chaste is, is, is a synonym for, for, for purity, a, a godly woman. Or chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning... Let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair, or of wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. We'll talk about that. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted God, the Bible says, adorned themselves. How? being in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Right? And, and, we'll, and we'll read the, 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 this other portion too, just so we understand that this is one section of Scripture. And this is what the husbands get to look forward to, the men get to look forward to next one. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, that's unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. And it says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be court, uh, courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, or contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereon to call, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips, that they should speak no guile. Let him shew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And so I titled this sermon, Marriage, God's Way. Marriage, God's Way. And a subtitle uh, would be, Marriage, It's Not About You. Marriage, It's Not About You. And, and I, as I was doing this study, uh, I was thinking about other passages, passages of Scripture. And, uh, we see that in 1 Peter chapter 3, another passage that talks about marriage is Ephesians chapter 5. I, I think of Colossians chapter 3. And all, and all these passages, when it talks about the husband and the wives, the wives, and the duties of each party, it talks about what the husband's responsibility is. 
and what the wives' responsibility is. And, and, and notice what it doesn't say is, is that, uh, it doesn't say that make sure that your, your spouse is meeting your needs. No, 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 the Bible makes an emphasis. No, no, focus on yourself, making sure that you are the godly man, the godly woman, that God wants you to be and to focus on your spouse, right? See, marriage, just like anything else, just like our Christian lives, there can be a tendency to make it about us. That's where, that, that, that's where there can be a tendency. Oh, so-and-so is not meeting my needs, or I'm not getting my way, right? And just like our Christian lives, we see this idea that, that oftentimes we make life about ourselves, right? And marriage is no different, right? But, but what we see in Scripture, what we see from the words of God, is that we have to have a willingness to put our sides, our own desires, and to put our uh, and to put the spouse's desires and the spouse's needs before our own. And, and before we get into wives, we have to make sure that we have a basic understanding of marriage, right? And we know that biblically, it is of utmost importance that Christ be at the center of that marriage. Uh, and, and that each, each party, the husband and the wife, be in submission to Christ. And understand that each party should understand their biblical role, right? And like I said, if you're not married this morning, you don't just tune out, right? We, we, you understand that all scripture is profitable, but understand that, that if you're a young woman today, this is the way that, this is the attitude, this is the behavior that God wants young women to have. And if you're a young man today, as we talk about wives, this is the kind of godly woman that we should be looking for, right? This is the type of godly woman that we should be looking for. So, so starting with the wives, let's look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Right? Subjection. And we, we talk about submission a lot, right? And in order for us to understand biblical submission, how the wife ought to submit to the husband, we, ought to, we need to understand how God has set up the marriage, right? We, ha we have to understand that it's that God created the family, right? And just like how God uh, instituted the government, right? God created the family with the husband as the head. That's how God created the family, right? And it doesn't mean that men are more valuable than women. That's not what it means. What, what it means is that men and women are different. I, I mean, society might try to tell you otherwise, and, and it's, it's crazy how that's being distorted. But men and women are different, are different and are given different roles. I mean, we see that in Scripture, right? That God created Eve for Adam he, he, to be his help meet, right? And, and, so, and so with God creating each gender differently, he, get, he assigned different gender roles, right? Uh, and so, and that, and God created marriage, and He created uh, men and women differently for the purpose of living together, of serving the Lord better together, and of raising children to follow Christ. That is why God created the family. Why? So they would be more effective. So, so man that w wouldn't be alone. That they would be more effective together in serving God and for the for the raising children to the Lord. That that is the purpose of the family. And so part of the skill sets, part of the uh, difference in the genders, part of what God has assigned to men specifically is leadership, right? It is leadership. God has given men leadership abilities to be able to lead the home, right? And God wants every man who is married to be a solid Christ-centered man leading their family closer to Jesus Christ every single day. And, and so understand this, is that there are different roles within the marriage. The husband has a role, the wife has a role, but it is for the purpose of coming together towards Christ, to raising children towards the Lord, that you ought to serve God together. And so to understand submission, we have to understand accountability, right? Accountability. Men are held accountable to God by for the decisions made within the home. Well, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, God, God went to Adam and asked him, Hey, dude, what happened? What's going on? Right? Why did he eat of the fruit? 
And so with accountability, God holds men as the leaders accountable to, to give an answer to God for the decisions made as a family unit that God holds men responsible. So ultimately, there has to be a submission there. That, that hey, if, if man is responsible, that there has to be a biblical submission there. And, and so wives submit themselves to the husband, and this is important, that men submit themselves to Christ himself, right? A, 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 a biblically run home is a, is a home where the husband submits to the spouse, and the, and the, 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 the I said that backwards, the wife submits to the husband, and that the husband is an utter submission to Christ. That is so important, right? Man, it, it is not your way or the highway. It, it, it is leading the home in a way that honors the Lord and making decisions according to the way that Christ wants you to make decisions. Right? We, we see uh, the comparison uh, that we see is, is Ephesians chapter 5, talking about Christ and the church. Ephesians 5, 22, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is a savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And, and so understand this, is that biblical, the biblical model of leadership is meant to flow just like that. That us as a church, we are in submission to Christ. The wife should be in submission to the husband. But the husband should be in submission to Jesus Christ. But understand is that when that flows smoothly, when, when, when all parties are in submission to one another, I, I, I mean, I think of Christ himself being in submission to the will of the Father, right? That, that is a healthy relationship. It is a good relationship. Uh, there, there, there's, there, as Christians... Uh, guys and gals, there should be a, a beauty, there should be a, a comfort in us, all of us, being in submission to Jesus Christ. Because He is a wonderful Savior. He is the head of the church. There is nothing better than being under good leadership, right? There, there should be a comfort in that. There should be a peace in that. And if all parties are doing their job, that is how it should flow. And, and so... Uh, when we're looking at verse uh, number one and verse two, it, it is that we see, like we talked about, that wives should be uh, in submission to their own husbands, right? In, in the sense that uh, men are, like I said, held responsible for the decisions. But understand that God has given women a special role within the family for a reason, right? And the example that uh, that I've used before is, is, is a pilot and a co-pilot, right? The pilot is held accountable for the plane, right? He will answer for how he, how he, uh, how he flies that plane and, and the passengers and stuff on board. But the co-pilot has a very important role too, right? And, and there are certain areas, certain gifts, certain abilities that the co-pilot has, and there, there's a reason why he's there. And there are times, there are a lot of times, when the pilot should listen to the co-pilot. Why? Because God gave you that co-pilot for a reason, right? And God, God, God said, Adam, you need some help. I'm going to make you, right? So understand that and, and, and have comfort in that, that, that God, this uh, system, this, this family dynamic that God has created is a good thing. He has made it for a reason, right? But understand this, when it comes to wives, is that their testimony, the testimony of a godly woman is insanely powerful, right? Because we talk about how a biblical, a biblical man, biblical woman, right? The man is following the Lord. The woman is following the Lord. That is a great recipe, right? But what happens when the man is not a Christian? What happens when the man, maybe he is a Christian, but he's not following Christ? Man, let me say this. Do not put your woman in that position. Do not put your wife in that position at, at all. You, you ought to be in submission to Christ. And you should, it should be a, there should be a, a comfort in your leadership. But wives, or, or, or if you're sitting here today and, you're, and your husband is not a Christian, or, or if your husband is not following Christ, the Bible has some words for you. Look at uh, the second half of verse 1. The Bible says that if any, any of the husbands, says, Obey not the word, obey not the word of God, are not Christ's followers, are in submission to Christ. Look what it says. They may also, without the word, that without the Bible, right, if they don't hold to the Bible, 
they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And, and understand that word conversation, like I said, um, in, in the King James, that word for behavior, the way that you act, the way that you conduct yourself, right? And, and so if any obey not the word, if any are not Christians, not following Christ, they may by the behavior of the wise be won over to Christ, right? And, and so we talked about the, the, the we're talking about the, the powerful testimony of a godly woman, right? Of a godly woman. I mean, if a woman is in subjection to her own husband, even when she's not following Christ, and her behavior is one where it clearly follows Christ, then that, that is a powerful testimony, it is a powerful tool to win the husband over to Christ, right? We've been talking a lot about our testimony, right? And, and how, the, how, the, how the world uh, looks at Christians and is constantly trying to find fault in Christians. And we talked about how, how it is of utmost importance that we be uh, surrendered to God and, and how we ought to obey the ordinance of man. We've talked about that. Well, when there is a, there, when there is a husband who is not following Christ, likewise, the, the, the godly testimony of a godly woman should show. It should lead the husband towards Christ. Uh, I mean, I, I think of a, when we think of a virtuous woman, a godly woman, a woman of purity, how, how great of a testimony that is, and how this world and how this world is staying straying farther and farther away from Christ. And you see in, in the news and the media how how, uh, how the world is trying to portray women, how sad it is. But when you have a godly woman, a woman who will stand, take a stand for Christ. A woman say, hey, no, we are going to church because that is what honors the Lord. That, they, that with, with that testimony will win the husband or should win the husband over to Christ. Right? Our, our testimony, not just women, guys too. There, there, there should be a, 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 a place where, where uh, people should look at us and like I said before, they should think, wow, this is what it means to be a Christ follower. Wow. They listen to authority. They're, they're, they, they lead by, or they, uh, they follow the example even when they don't agree, but they are, they are followers of Christ, and people should just be drawn to it, right? A light in the darkness, the salt of the earth. People should be drawn to the way that we act. If people aren't attracted to your behavior as Christians, I have to ask the question, are you truly following Christ? Because what we know from the testimony of Jesus Christ is that Christ was constantly drawing people towards himself. And as we, as, as the light of the world, as Christ is the light of the world, and we reflect his light, we should be drawing others closer to us. And, and us should be our mirror reflection of Jesus Christ. And so when it comes to a godly woman, there is such a unique opportunity for women of today to reach the lost, to reach uh, an unbelieving husband. Why? Because of how rare it is. Why? Because of how great God is. Because of the reflection that Christ should have in our lives. That's what the Bible says, that they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Look at verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation, again, the behavior, coupled with fear. And so that word chaste is a synonym for the word purity. Pure woman, right? I, I think of a virtuous woman that comes to mind from Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her prize is far above rubies, right? So, so wh where does purity come from? Wh wh where does a, a cha uh, being chased, having a chaste conversation come from? Well, it comes from following the Lord, right? We, we know that. You can't escape it if you if you look at any sort of media today, is that women lack purity, right? And, and, and I'm not saying that those women can't be redeemed and, and be transformed to the image of Christ. I'm not saying that, but there is a very clear image of how the world displays women. But a godly woman, a woman who follows Christ, has has a has a certain uh, uniqueness to her behavior, right? Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. And, and, and that virtue comes from following the Lord. 
it, it, it's, it's, it's a submission that you don't need man's approval. You don't need the world's approval. That God is sufficient for you. And, and, and it's, it's an attitude of, of, hey, God is my number one priority, not the world, right? That may, they may be hold your chaste conversations coupled with fear. It's a purity, it, it's, it's a desire to put your, your own desires aside to follow God and, and to uh, commit to following the, the word of God. And, and fear, we know that fear, that it's, it's a reverence to it, right? A reverence fear for God and, and, and a reverence, really, for your husband as well. That, that, uh, that there, there, is a, there should be a, a purity, a, a reverence, the way that a woman, a godly woman, conducts herself. Is what the Bible is talking about, and so what, what happens when you have a, a, a godly woman who who loves God, who 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 cares about her testimony, who who, cur- who tries to conserve her virtue and, and, and just her her testimony, right, and and, and just uh, follows her and, and follows the Lord and cares about reaching Him. How does that outwardly come out? Verse number three. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning, plating of the hair, you know, wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. So there's this idea of, of, you know, a lot of this world and what you see online is that women, a lot of times, who are not following God, try to seek validation and try to seek uh, just approval from the world out there in a lot of different godly ways. And whether that be being immodest physically or, or, or trying to gain approval with, with what you wear and, and just trying to get approval from others, right? That's what the Bible says. Who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning or plating of the hair and the wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, right? It, it's not talking about, it's not, it's not saying that you can't wear, wear um, any, anything that has gold in it. That's not what the Bible is saying. But it's an attitude of, you know, I'm going to dress myself seeking the approvals of others and just caring so much about what others think about you and, and having, ha- having that need of validation from the world, right? The Bible says let it not be that, right? And, and, and guys, too, guys can be guilty of this, too, where, where and we care so much about what people think about us and trying to gain the approval of others, right? Let it never be said of us. Why? Because the only approval that we should truly seek is the Lord. That, that, that is the only approval that we should truly seek. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, you know, wearing nice shoes and wearing nice clothes. What I'm talking about is an attitude of just trying to impress people, uh, of trying to seek people's approval, uh, of, of, of just not being content within yourself, but needing validation from the world. That is what the Bible is talking about. And, and so when we, when we talk about modesty and, and being modest, an immodest attitude is cares about getting the approval and validation from others. Right? That, that is ultimately what stems immodesty, is, is wanting to get approval from others. Where modesty is, is, is you know what God has said about you. You don't need that approval. Because why? Because God is sufficient. And so modesty comes from having a sense of purity that comes from God, preserving yourself for your spouse. That is where modesty comes from, right? And modesty in the, in the sense of, you know, not just show, not showing excess skin. It's specifically what it's talking about here is it's not a boasting. Oh, look at what I have. Look at what I can afford. Look at the gold that I, that I can, can wear, right? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with in and of itself wearing something that has gold on it but it's rather the attitude that it is uh, rebuking, right? But rather, how should it come out, right? All right, when we t- the Bible tells us how we ought not to be, uh, how, how should we be? Look at verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Let it be the hidden man of the heart. What does that mean? Well, let's keep reading. In that which is not corruptible. Look at this. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. Let me read that again. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God 
great Christ. So as opposed to having this attitude of seeking validation from the world, meekness has this idea that meekness is strength under control. It's not that you need a validation. It's not that you need to be a quiet spirit. It's that you do not need to be loud and rambunctious and seeking attention. It's an attitude that you know who you are in Christ. That It's not that you're weak. It, it's meekness is not weakness. It's strength under control. And one who's not boastable about what she has because you understand what you have in the Lord. Right? And here we're given an example in verse number 5. Verse 5 says, For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, and key words right there, for, for after this manner, the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. And now we're giving the example of Sarah and Abraham. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid of any amazing. So Sarah uh, was subject to her own husband. She was submissive, right? And understand this, is that modern day culture, the media, is trying to push back against the word of God. See, modern day feminism seeks to destroy the institution of marriage that God has laid out, and let it not present itself in our families today. See, feminism today, right, it, it is fueled by a desire for power, right, to, to, to be uh, the head of the home, and, and, and it really, it's a prideful attitude, right, uh, of we don't need men, right, but understand that it is contrary to the word of God, it is contrary to the, the way that God has instituted the family relationship, it is contrary to the husband and wife relationship, because God tells women to to just really fully appreciate the role that you're in. That that if, if you're that uh, a godly husband is a very valuable, and and, and husbands men, men, let me tell you that you should be somebody who is wor- who you are. You should be somebody who should be worthy of being submitted to, right? And we have to make sure uh, men have to make sure that we are doing our part in following Christ. Right, and don't make women's lives any more difficult than it needs to be. Right, and, and, and so God tells women that, hey, to fully appreciate that the role that God has given you, to not listen to the world out there, how it is a beautiful thing. Right, God's model for marriage is a wonderful model. Right, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid. Of any amazing, right? So, so there should be a comfort in being under godly authority, and there should be a comfort in being under a man who follows Christ, right? And like I said, maybe you're sitting here, maybe you say, "Hey, pastor, I'm single." Hey, I get it, <laughs> I get it. But this is the model for what God calls a godly woman. This is the model for marriage that God has for us. So, man, if you're single. This is what you should be seeking after, right? But there should be a, a changed desire in you to not go after the women that the world values and that the world lifts up, but a godly woman, a woman who fears the Lord, a, a, a woman who, 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 who has dedicated, who, 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 who seeks after being a virtuous woman, who, who, who wants to uh, take care of children, who wants to uh, uh, be uh, a help me to a man. That is the kind of women that we should be seeking after. And, and if you're if you're a young man out there, an older man, and you say, "Hey, I'm single, and I'm sh- and I struggle with this," well, so just just ask God, ask the Lord to give you that godly desire, right? Uh, like I said, th- th- this is something that the world is just trying to Satan is trying to attack the family model, right? Because if you can get in the family, we know the effects that that has in society today. Right? If God, if, if Satan can attack the family, right, what does that lead to? That leads to women who don't want to submit. Right? That leads to less children. That leads to um, 
fathers who aren't fathers. That basically leads to the world that we have out there right now, the family structure that we have out there. So have comfort and have peace and have assurance in what God has said. And, and, and wives, make sure that you are following the Lord and make sure that uh, you're in submission to your husband. And husband, make sure that you're in submission to Christ, right? And when I say submission, understand it is a team effort. It is a team effort. But to understand submission, you have to understand accountability, that the man is held accountable to the Lord, to the decisions that are made in the home. The wives are held accountable in the sense of you're there for a reason, so let your voice be heard. Uh, after, if you're following the Lord, let, let your voice be heard. But well, husbands are the ones who are held accountable to God. And listen, there is nothing wrong with uh, not being accountable to God. Let me, let me put it that way. Um, uh, now that I'm pastoring, I look at things a little bit differently. But there were times in the church where um, I understood, you know, when I was the youth pastor um, in outreach, where I was like, well, and then things would happen. And I would say things like, well, I'm glad I'm not the pastor. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not the one who has to make a decision that, that, God, that um, God's kind of hold me accountable for. Really, that is the office that I partake in. And, and I just use that to make comparison that when you have godly leadership and then you can trust in that and you can bounce ideas off each other, and make a godly decision, take comfort in the fact that they have to answer to God and not you, okay? Um, and be glad in the model that God has given us, because it is a good model. And it, it, is, it is one that honors the Lord. And so take great care in that, um, and take comfort in that. How, how wives, there, there should be a purity and a, and a reverence to, for, uh, towards God, and a desire to meet the needs of your husband, um, and that should flow from a meek, that, what that should flow into is a meek and quiet spirit, right, in, in the way that we see here, right, one that doesn't seek approval from the world, but is content uh, with, her, with, with their spouse, and is content uh, with the Lord, right? And husbands, man, you're not getting off easy, you're next week, okay? Because you have a responsibility as well. I don't feel like I'm just taking out the woman. Guys will get their turn next week, okay? So wise, fulfill your role. Be happy. T t have a sense of, of fulfillment in what God has given you. Husbands, for now, I'm just going to say, be a man worth following. Follow the Lord. Follow Christ. Um, be worthy of leading a woman and a family to the Lord. Right? Because men, where I'm just going to leave you with this, men should honor their wives. And, and, and seek uh, to 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 uh, to meet their needs, okay? To be attentive um, to their needs. Uh, but we'll talk more about that next week. So let's do this. Let's close in a word of prayer, um, and we will be dismissed. So let's, let's have an invitation. If everybody could please stand, head bowed, eyes closed, have the time.